Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 81 for Wednesday, January 20th, 2016. Travel Tools. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. So this is the time of year where I realize that I need to take a trip or a vacation or something, and my mind kind of wanders into the world of travel companion apps. Give me a break. This is what I do for a living. Uh, I might not actually be taking that vacation right now, but I could pretend that I am. And the next time I'm actually taking that trip, these apps could come in very handy. Uh, to be fair, one of them is for those of you fortunate enough to have VIP status in some sort of the planes, uh, you know, the planes that you fly, the airlines, all that kind of stuff. I don't have that yet, but we can pretend. Uh, so in today's roundup, I'm going to give you a few tools that will help you get ready to leave and keep you comfortable on your trip. Here we go. So it's time to get ready for that trip to Hawaii. Oh, there's nothing worse than the feeling you get when you're on the road to the airport and suddenly you remember that you left something at the house that you meant to bring along. You need PackPoint Premium Packing List. You'll tell PackPoint if you're a guy or a girl starting off, where you're going, when that trip is, how many nights you'll stay there, and then if the trip is for business or personal reasons. All of this stuff informs PackPoint of what to pack for, what, what to advise you to pack for. Skipping forward, you'll tell PackPoint the activities that you plan to do while you're there. In Hawaii, I'll surely do some swimming, maybe go out for a fancy dinner or two with my lady, uh, hit the beach, do some hiking. I'll also tell PackPoint whether I plan on doing laundry while I'm there and if I want my basics to kind of repeat or if I want to bring clean stuff for every single day that I'm there. Now, PackPoint then imports weather data for the travel dates that you selected and provides a packing list with some basic weather information for your stay. It's all tied together. You can check off any of the items as you pack them into your bags and if you don't actually think you're going to need an item that appears on the list, you simply swipe it away. That plus on the side of an item actually allows you to alter the amount to bring if you need to bring more, you know, goggles or whatever. All of your essentials are listed and each activity shows a running list of things to consider. It's thorough, as you can see. Now, paying a $2.99 premium upgrade gives access to a few features. First, if I think the items for a particular activity should be customized for future trips, I can do so and have my own custom things appear in those lists the next time I select it. It also has TripIt and Evernote integration built in. PackPoint can be found in the Play Store right now. Now, if you are a frequent flyer, maybe you fly business class or you just have a ton of money and you like to travel in style, lucky you, then Lounge Buddy might be pretty handy for you. When you first log in, you're going to be asked to tell Lounge Buddy what kind of access you might have to things like airport lounges of all types. Maybe you have elite status on an airline or a membership of some sort to a group of lounges. Sometimes your credit card membership actually gives you special access, so look into that. Or if you're in the military, there's, uh, there's some lounges provided for you guys too, thankfully. Go through Lounge Buddy and select any and all that apply to you. Now, we're going to create a trip to tell Lounge Buddy where we'll be passing through on our trip to New York, let's say. We're going to tell it that I'm flying on Virgin Airlines. My origin airport is here at San Francisco International. There's going to be a connection in Cleveland, Ohio, let's say, and then I'm going to arrive at JFK International. I'll dream big and say that those flights are all first class because, you know, I'm a big deal, apparently. And now we have the trip, as you can see here. Now, tapping any airport on this list takes me to the lounges view. And here I can scan for lounges inside that airport that I'll have to, first of all, pay money to access in this first column or this free tab 
which is a list of lounges that I already have access to based on my memberships and statuses that I selected at the beginning. Now, tapping into any one lounge shows a bit of information as well as ratings for that particular lounge. Lounge Buddy shows community reviews, so you can see what kind of amenities are offered and if it's just any good. Some photos are also included down below by other community members. If you're searching for a specific amenity, like let's say beer and wine, just tap the amenities setting up top and you can narrow your view by selecting that important choice. Unlike the lounges themselves, Lounge Buddy is free in the Play Store. Now, when you get where you are going, you'll be starving for some local flavors. And this app is here to give you some inside scoops. The app is called Zomato, but you might remember Urban Spoon, which was actually acquired by Zomato early last year. Zomato then is the combined effort of both restaurant search apps. So it's like the best of both worlds. And as you can see, it's very well done. First off, the community is a big part of this app. My location is grabbed first and foremost, and I'm shown some excellent recommendations up there at the top. Tapping into a spot gives me all of the contact location and website information that you might need at a glance. I can check into a spot if I'm there and share with other locals and visitors what I happen to be eating and even attach a picture while I'm at it. I can assign my own rating for the spot and that's aggregated with all of the other user ratings for that particular spot. And of course, if I'm feeling verbose, I can drop in a short review. More than 140 characters, it says. Now scrolling down, I actually see other user photos, ratings, and reviews of that particular place. And even further, I can find you know, the other important information like hours and types of cuisine that are offered here. Zomato does let me pick places by type of food from the main screen and the design of everything just feels nice, fresh, crisp, some very nice material design notes throughout. Now down below the main feed, there's also this collections section to tap into where I can access trending locations near me and also create my own tailor-made collections for other users that might follow me over time. Let's say my favorite Petaluma Italian restaurants, for example. Sure, Zomato is playing on a crowded field with competition from Yelp and Foursquare, but it's designed really well and has a nice active community that makes it worth checking out. Find Zomato for free in the Play Store. Okay, so there you have it. Not only did I pack your bags for you, I found you a nice place to relax while you wait for your plane and a place to eat once you get to your destination. And I won't even ask for a tip this time. Now, up next is a new app for Android Wear that, I don't know, maybe tries a bit too hard to maximize the space on that tiny little screen on your wrist. Let's see what you think. The old saying goes, just because you can, doesn't mean that you should. And a whole heck of a lot of apps for Android Wear can safely fit into that category. I've seen apps that emulate old school computer OSs running on Android Wear. And I know some people swear by them, but personally, keep your tap screen keyboards off of my tiny watch screen display. So then, along those lines, we have a new way to, yes, view your lengthy Google Docs and PDFs on your watch. It's called Documents for Android Wear. I'm not necessarily going to say that it shouldn't exist, but I will say that viewing docs on your watch probably isn't the best use of your eyesight. Once I've connected the app to my Google Drive account, I can launch documents on my watch and then scan through all of my available Google Docs, for example. I'll go ahead and choose the All About Android Google Doc. And after a little bit of loading time, there it is in all its glory. So tiny, <laughs> I can't read a thing. Thankfully, I can tap to zoom in a bunch of times, but I never fully get zoomed in. So let's face it, this page of the doc is pretty useless here. Now scrolling down brings me to the other sheets inside the document. Maybe I'll have better luck there. And well, no, not really. Okay, how about a PDF? Let's try a PDF. Oh, well, that's a bit better, I suppose, but let's, let's be honest. In order to read anything, I'm zooming, I'm swiping all around the dock just to do it, just to do it on this tiny little circular screen. Quite frankly, the best option is to simply pull out your phone, but I applaud the effort. And once again, I'm reminded that everything is worth trying at least once. I mean, right? That's what they say too. Uh, documents for Android Wear is free to try with a premium upgrade that unlocks full document capabilities for $2.99 in the Play Store. 
look, who am I to judge? Some people simply want all their screens to do all the things, but I am pretty sure I won't be using my watch to load up any Google Docs or PDFs anytime soon. You can judge for yourself. Send me your favorite apps and your categories to arena at twit.tv. You can also post those to the subreddit at androidapparena.reddit.com. The show plays live every Wednesday around 5 p.m. Pacific following tech news today at twit.tv slash live. And the new episode always appears later that evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena. Mm-hmm.